And so we're back. Welcome back to the press conference room. And we're talking to all the participants of the second semi-final today. I'm Ulla Essendrop, and I'll be moderating the rest of the press conferences here today. And uh, let's jump right into it and welcome the next artist to the stage. Please welcome Can Lin, featuring Casey Smith from Ireland, participating with the song Heartbeat. Hello, welcome. Hello, hi, hi, hello, hi, hello, hello. Ooh, big group here. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, you all look very smiling and relaxed. <laughs> That's good to see. Welcome to Thank the stage. You. Thanks. Um, should we start by a short introduction? Would you like to introduce your panel here? Yeah, well, I'm Casey Smith. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Thomas Spratt. Nice to I'm you. Hazel. I'm the mentor from Ireland. I'm Joe, and also one of the composers. Oh, I'll go with you. <laughs> I'm Jenny. I'm one of the backing singers. I'm Denise. I'm the violinist. I'm Tarek, and I'm one of the dancers. And uh, I'm Michael, and I'm the head of delegation. Right, we've got that sorted then. Fantastic. So, as I, as I said, you, you're all very smiling. Does that mean that your second rehearsal went well? Yes. It did, it went very, very well. Obviously, every time we rehearse, it's going to keep getting better and better. And yeah, we're very happy. Mm -hmm. Very happy with today. And uh, what was different today from the first rehearsal? It's just really getting comfortable with the stage. And, you know, you just, you just feel, you know, just get to know your surroundings, I think. And um, yeah, just we're delighted with today's rehearsal. So what feeling do you have when you're standing on the stage? Oh, you can't describe it. It's just amazing. It's unbelievable. Like everyone on the, on the stage gets the same feeling. And when it comes together, the energy, like you can just actually feel it off each other. So it's great when everyone's on the same level. So mm, nice. Yeah. Um, maybe for we have the online viewers with us as well. Hello. So maybe Hi. for new viewers and new members of the audience here, would you mind please explaining to us what exactly can Lin means? Kanlin means sing together in Irish, so um, that's what we're doing. Uh, music is bringing us all together, so yeah, mm -hmm. Kanlin. And uh, we have a thing going on on Twitter and Facebook and online media uh, called Ask Eurovision, hashtag Ask Eurovision, where you can ask the artist's question. Yeah. And ESC Heart uh, asks you to please explain the cooperation between Casey Smith and, and Kanlin. The cooperation? Yeah, what, what kind of cooperation is it? What... Um, well, we're, we're all performers mm -hmm. gathering together to get on the stage from Ireland and just put on a show, basically. You know, we've, you know, our mentor, Hazel, you know, I think you can explain yeah, it. But originally when I, was, um, when I was asked to do, uh, it's like your song, we have a, a program in Ireland called Your Song and five mentors are picked. And my vision from the start was that it was everything good from Ireland. Not only the Irish dancing, which is, is a newer form of Irish dancing because we have 20 years of river dance this year. And I chose Casey Smith because she's one of the most phenomenal singers out of Ireland now. And uh, she's an up-and-coming, ready-to-go pop star. And uh, the girls, everybody together has an amazing energy. And I wanted everyone to uh, see what Ireland can represent. And, and we, we as, a, as a team, are putting ourselves forward very well, I think, in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if we look back one year, Ireland came in at the last place Did. at the Eurovision Song Contest. In the final. So, in the final, it did go to the final though. Yeah, <laughs> good, good really point, last very last good point. Get it in there, Mike, get it in. But does that put any pressure on you? Because I'm sure the Irish would like you to do well and have a good result. Oh, of course, you know, Ireland is so supportive. And, you know, obviously it is a lot of pressure. It just shows you that any year, any song could do bad that you thought would have been number one. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I think he deserved a lot better than that. Um, the song itself, but it just shows you, you don't know what people like that year, so. But if there ever was a nation that proves that you can actually can perform sing. well in the Eurovision Song Contest, it's Ireland, isn't it? Yeah. It is. The most <laughs> successful. We have won it seven times already, and I'm hoping that this is like, after 20 years of Riverdance, I'm hoping that we can do much better than we've done. And I believe that we have a great show this year. I, I believe that I've, we've all put all our heart and souls into it, and it'd be unfair to be in the last five. I'm hoping to be in the top five. 
Good. As a mom manager. Yeah. <laughs> a mom manager. <laughs> Fantastic. I've been the for the whole time I've been. <laughs> well, I think we should ask the audience if anyone has any questions. Uh, we need a microphone here, yes? Uh, hi, guys. Alistair Hello. Birch from SBS hi, Radio Alistair. in Australia. I read somewhere that you support a pink tie charity. Is that correct? Can you give us a bit more information about it, please? Pink tie charity? It's Avian's Pink Tie Charity. Oh, um, very good, It's yeah. basically um, the father of a little girl who passed away four years ago from cancer. And um, we met him in the airport and took some snaps um, to promote and to put on his Facebook page. And um, his charity is to support families that are going through um, having a child suffering with cancer and to help them financially. So to help them um, with a place to stay and with money maybe towards their bills and food and things like that, because it's obviously very difficult and it's a big strain on the family. So um, we met him, uh, Jimmy Norman was his name, and we met him in the airport. He's a lovely guy, and we got some snaps with him, and they'll be up on the Facebook page. So, and we all got lovely pink bands to wear as well. Oh, that's very sweet. Mm. Yes, more questions? We have a question. Yes, from uh, the gentleman here with the hat. Hello. We need a microphone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're complete strangers, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. I know that there's going to come a lot of serious questions. So I know that you guys are young and you don't want to get that bored, right? So <laughs> what I got to shoot is that uh, I know that you guys are fabulous and you're young and you're beautiful ladies and you're having a great time. What I want to ask you for the first is how do you find nightlife in Copenhagen compared to Dublin? And the second question is going to come to you, ladies. I know guys are after you, 24-7. <laughs> Any of you got some luck? <laughs> I'm some Sam. <laughs> like, I know, you know what, what I mean. We're all taken, unfortunately. We're all taken, unfortunately. We're unfortunately. We, so the nightlife. <laughs> Oh, the nightlife, yeah, have the you, nightlife you is brilliant. We went to um, the Euro Club mm -hmm. the other night and we went to see some acts play and it was amazing. And we're going to do it tonight as well. We're going to be there at half 12, performing heartbeats, so we can't wait to get up there as well. And Good. other than that, they know nothing about the nightlife. We've been no. in bed at yes, 7 they, o'clock every night. I just want to clarify that one. Very. Well, they never we're locked out. away. They're in bed by 10 every <laughs> night, I know. They're in bed by 10 o'clock. Mm. Like, we are Irish at the end of the day. I'm, I want them to have fun when they come here. So we got off the plane at half nine on the Tuesday night when we got here, and we were straight in the pub by half 11. So we do have... <laughs> we, we have We had a burger, though, and we had a, a pint with our burger. The Guinness is not um, readily available here. Only it's one or two pubs that, that have it. So we're not, we're not doing too badly. <laughs> Did you have time actually to, to see anything and experience anything here in Copenhagen? Well, yes. the last time we were speaking to you, we were saying we're going to go yeah. to the Tivoli. Yeah. Well, we went to the Tivoli and oh my God, it was absolutely amazing. She that was, was fun. oh no, Donna was having a heart attack on the roller coaster <laughs> beside me. And I was like, Donna, can I sit beside you the whole time? And she was just hilarious. But uh, Thomas robbed her off me then, so, so he could have a few laughs. But oh my God, the laugh we had. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So uh, what will you be spending your time doing from now on to the uh, second semi-final? We're going, to uh, we're going to perfect it. We've got to make sure that we know absolutely where we're going, where, what camera angles, and, and really just then have a bit of fun doing it. Because I think that if you stand on stage and you resonate that you're enjoying the performance, that it, 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 people can feel that at home. And I want, I want the act to go out there and at the, you know, the last hurdle to show that we are having a bit of fun with it. At the end of the day, it's, I know it's a competition, but I, I, I picked a good team to do it. And even, even by having, especially Tommy, our choreographer, for he his, does great energy on stage. He, he takes the nervousness away from the girls within a, a, a click of a, a click of a finger. <laughs> I can do it like Tommy Hill. <laughs> and, and I think that breaks the nervous tension. And you know, it's not so serious. It's I know it's a song competition, but we're having fun. I know we have a great song. I know we have a great act. I know we have you know the best uh, that we can possibly throw at it. And you know, just we're going to have a bit of fun now and just enjoy mm. the experience. I mean, I, I have to say the connection that we have. I mean, I love working with the guys, um, and we get on stage. It's when we're the happiest, really. So getting onto the big stage, getting our placements the first time, going on a little bit less nervous. Of course, mm. we're going to be so nervous, mm -hmm. but get a little bit less nervous that it's not our first time on that stage. stage yeah. That we're getting to spaces, and then at the end of the day. Day, we want to have fun. We want to get out there and do 100% for Ireland, but at the end of the day, 
make sure we come off that stage and went, did you enjoy it? Yeah, we did. Yeah. It's yeah. an experience. It's an experience. And, we're going, and we're experiencing it all together, and that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah that's a good mission. Yeah. yeah. But if you said that you have to uh, spend time perfecting every little bit. Yeah. Can you, can you say, how exactly are you going to do that? Because you can't be on stage, because obviously all the other countries are, are rehearsing as well. So, and you can't be doing it in a hotel room either, because there's no space. So how... The how There's only so much that you can do, obviously, and I mean, we only have a certain amount of time, and each rehearsal, you only have a certain amount of time, and we go to the viewing room afterwards, and we see what works and what doesn't work. So as, you know, myself and Michael and the team, we, we, we watch it and say, okay, maybe not that camera angle, maybe come from the front. You, you perfect it as you go along, and really, we, we perfect it as much as we possibly can do now. We've, we went up on stage today, and I feel it's gone ten times better than it was the first time. So each time we, we do it, we get better. So I'm hoping on the night that we just we nail it. But you're feeling comfortable. Very comfortable. Very, you look very, like very you're comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Um, there's another question for you from, from uh, the hashtag Ask Eurovision from Gal Rafaya, who asks, how do you prepare yourself uh, before you go on stage? Well, um, um, we do. Well, the best thing to do is to make sure we're all comfortable, happy. Um, you know, the guys warm up. We do a warm up. Denise goes on her violin, warms up, and us three girls will do like a vocal warm up. And then we'll all come together and, you know, everyone has their own little thing and then we'll all get together, hug each other and just say, go out and do it. So that's I, the best thing you can do. I haven't do. done sit-ups yesterday morning. Oh <laughs> yeah. What's that good for? Well, it's good for warming up. Everybody connects together. Everybody's doing the same thing. So we kind of do like a body warm up, get everybody into the room for like 20, 25 minutes. And we do like a full body warm up. And then there's a vocal come in after that. It just gets everybody connected. So everyone's together going on stage. So we're all together. Without, and then everybody goes out there and does their own thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have one more question here from the gentleman. Yeah, okay. You afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I just have a question. I'm very anxious because uh, to uh, Tariq Shebani because the name does not sound very Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Am I correct? And yeah, if yes, where are you from? Yeah, uh, my mo my mother is Irish and my dad is Libyan, but I've lived in Ireland all my life. Sorry, I didn't hear the. My my mother is Irish and my dad is Libyan. Libyan from Libya. Yeah, so sound Libya. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I'm born in Ireland and lived there all my life. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank yes, you. and. The gentleman. Yes. Hi, my name is Bern from EurovisionLive.com. Uh, 20 years ago, um, there was Riverdance as the interval act. Do you see a special mm -hmm. connection uh, as you brought the Irish dancers? Absolutely. Like, I mean, it's 20 years. And, and when I was originally doing it as the mentor, I wanted to make sure that people outside of Ireland remembered Eurovision from that night of the di -di 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 -di. Mm. That, that feeling that everyone went, oh my God, that was amazing. So I wanted to make sure that that was in it this year. That's why I had the concept of having the Irish dance as well as a pop song, as well as having the everything traditional in it, as, as well as having the um, traditional bear on and the the fiddle. So it's an amalgam amalgamation of all good things that have come out of Ireland. And, you know, uh, 20 years um, with uh, Charlie and Paul Harrington um, won it that year. I mean, people don't forget that, that, that feeling that they had. I think people remembered Riverdance that night and forgot that we actually won it. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've uh, watched your rehearsals today. Yeah. And obviously, it, it's clear to see that there yeah. are elements of Irish dancing. Yeah. But it seems like there's a new take on it. It's, it's yeah. a modern yeah. version. Well, I mean, I'll let T Tommy answer that. I, yeah. I wanted, I wanted uh, it to be more modern than the typical Irish dancing, hands down by the side. It's, so it's how, a, have, it's you, how have you modernized it? Well, I think um, dance in itself has come a long way um, over the last 20 years. And especially in Ireland, we are known for Irish dancing, but we also have great hip-hop dancers, we've great musical theatre dancers, and I just kind of, and we've got great tap dancers as well. So when I sat down with Hazel to talk about the song, I was like, let's, can we get some of those elements in? So we have a bit of, you can't see it all obviously, but the audience will be able to see it. We've got a bit of commercial dancing there, with, um, combined with Irish, but it's kind of less, it's kind of freer arms, so it's not as like mm -hmm. straight arms. Mm -hmm. And we put a bit of like modern dancing there as well, so we got like some barrel turns and Jossie Coupagettes. So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. Because myself and Tarek and, and the girls as well would be different. We do Irish dancing, we do tap dancing, we do modern dancing, we do musical theatre. So it's got wanted to combine all that together so it just wasn't just 
just one style. And, and as well as that, the song itself is about um, Harpy, which myself and Jonas, being one of the writers, um, wrote uh, the song. And it's about a, a fight between light and darkness. And that's why the two guys on stage are these warrior styles, that they have this warrior style. And Casey is the goddess that saves the day at the end. And that's what the, the concept is. And I think it, it, it actually comes across very well when you see the graphics and how the weathering storm has gone and the lightning is behind her. And at the end, the, the sun comes up. And that's what everybody faces in uh, everyday life now, and especially Ireland. We went through the recession and the badness and the, all the hurt and all the, uh, the, the negatives. And now we're coming back into the light. And I want people, everyone out there has done that. Everyone has faced darkness. And at the end of the day, the sun will always come up. Do you know, I want people for that, to make that connection to the song. And I think Casey really puts that forward when she sings it. And to have that resonation with everyone, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with it so far. Well, there's definitely no doubt that you've put a lot of thought into yeah. making all the elements mm -hmm. correspond with each other. We're looking forward to seeing you on stage in the second semi-final. Best of luck to Thank all you. of you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you so, so much, much for joining us here. Thank you. And to our online viewers, we'll be back in approximately 10 minutes with a press conference with Belarus and Teo. So thanks so much for watching.